Good night, good evening, good morning, however you getting this receiving this podcast. This is a very special broadcast episode of Fast Break here on I Sports Radio, discussing everything that happened through the trade deadline. We have with Kevin Durant being moved, the Lakers making big big moves within the past uh day or so. Golden State Warriors trading away James Wiseman. We talk about who the winners, who the losers, who should have made moves, and what these teams' outlooks going to look down the line, short-term and long-term. But before we get started, tomorrow, it's the SoCal Supreme Sports Show with one Terry Rodriguez. I'm pretty sure he'll talk about the Lakers and the Clippers side of things and what that's going to happen with them tomorrow. Take that show out tomorrow at 2 o'clock to 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. Plus, the Carolina class with the NFL draft com- coming up. He'd be, tar- uh, be talking all things Carolina. Plus, the Hornets really didn't do too much at the deadline. This game last week, so I'm pretty sure they'll talk about that. So, let's get started. But first, let's hit some music. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in here tonight. We're here to talk about everything basketball. I kept the intro intro short because we got a <sighs> D-Lock is a lot of movement that happened today and yesterday. So we just, we just got to get right down to it. But first, we got to talk about the big one. Kevin Durant that happened late last night. The deal is Mikhail Bridges... Jay Crowder, who got flipped to Milwaukee. Cameron Johnson, a 2023 first round pick, unprotected. 2025, unprotected. 2027, unprotected. 2028, first round swap, unprotected. 2029, first round pick, unprotected. Phoenix Suns received Cam Durant, TJ Warren. Me and you were about to go to bed. You sent me the text. I couldn't believe it. We heard the rumblings that since Kyrie got traded that Kevin was probably up to do next. What are your thoughts of Kevin Durant going to the Phoenix Suns, the team with Chris Paul and Devin Booker? Well, for me, I think this is a major, major move. Um, Obviously, right now, Kevin Durant is dealing with this injury, which he'll come back, I believe, after the All-Star weekend, after the All-Star break. But this is a major steal, man. I mean, right now, there's nothing else really that uh, Phoenix really needs. Uh, I mean, you got Chris Paul, Devin Booker, you know, Katie, and you have DeAndre Eight. Yeah. So, for me... Uh, you, you know, we've seen and heard about um, Kevin Durant just wanting to play ball. That's all he wants to do. So now he's, you know, somewhere where clearly he want he can just play ball. You know, there's nothing else that he really needs to do. And then and now they have a, you know, they are in the running for uh, during the one of the, in the web, you know, to go the NBA Finals. Uh, and I say this now, the West is loaded, you know, and we'll go down other trades, but the West is so, so loaded. Um, and I think that it's going to take, you know, good chemistry uh, and to go on the road to get through, get, you know, 
to the Western Conference Finals. Every round, every, you know, at this point, you can't miss not one series in the West. It's going to be, you know, great matchups all the way through. I don't think, from what I would see right now, even through the play, I don't see any team getting swept uh, in the West. It's going to be pretty tough to get up out of there. But, um, you know, giving up Cam Johnston, Mikael Bridges, and apparently the, Sun, the, the Nets really like uh, Bridges because it seems like reportedly that a team offered Brooklyn four first-round picks for Mikael Bridges, and clearly they declined that. So, uh, but that is a hell of a steal for Phoenix. Clearly, this is where he wanted to go. Uh, makes you wonder about how really Joe Sadi didn't really like Kyrie because he sent Kevin Durant where he wanted to go, but didn't send Kyrie where he wanted to. So, um, well, I got sustained say by him. Oh yeah, I mean, but it, all in all, a uh, uh, very big move. Uh, that's the one that kind of got everything started. Um, again, I've seen it basically around 24 to 21 hours. Uh, actually, 20, 24 to 26, 27 hours ago, and I just had to, <laughs> I had to see, talk about it because that is a hell of a huge, a, a huge move. Um, remember, we were hearing the day before that they were not going to trade Kevin Durant, and then, boom, this happens. Uh, so, um, but yeah, it was, like I said, that started the day off, <laughs> the day before, actually, uh, the day, and, hell, they got everything rolling after that. But that trade alone, uh, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, I know Kevin Durant is a big piece uh, for Phoenix. Um, I guess you can say with that that being said, Phoenix clearly won a trade. But if Brooklyn kept those pieces, I, don't, I didn't think it was a bad trade for Brooklyn as well. Now, obviously, they end up trading Jay Crowder. But uh, I definitely thought that uh, getting four first-round picks, a young McCaff Bridges was, what, 25, 26? Um, and Cam Johnson. They should be, you know, pretty solid over there, but um, got a good haul. But at the end of the day, you know, CP3, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant on the same team, they may, be, they may create, create some madness over there in, in, in Phoenix. I mean, where to begin with Kevin Durant? I think for the look on the Brooklyn side of things, the picks that matter the most. I think, you know, again, all these picks unprotected was the right move. The only move that need to have to make this move. And plus, with new ownership at Phoenix, you knew that you knew they want to make a splash. And this is like more of the big splash that they can do. Get Kevin Durant and TJ Warren back to Phoenix. And just kind of look at how, you know, this shaped out and how quickly it came about. You know, good for Phoenix. You know, got Robert Sauver out the way, new ownership in, and that get and they get Kevin Durant. And I think for the uh, for the Nets. You know, getting bridges, okay. We'll see if we can do more a f- feature role. Cam Johnson, we're, we're coming for injury, so we won't see him until next year. You know, they flipped Jay uh, Crowder to the uh, Bucks for the for the multiple second round picks. So for Brooklyn, they'll still make the playoffs. Whatever moves they made. But it it'd be really to see how this team is gonna be shaped for the future. And we'll talk about more about Brooklyn here in a second, but you know, I think they're gonna do enough to compete for a playoff spot this year. But they gotta look hard in the mirror to see which direction they wanna go. They finally recognized Cam Thomas' ability. And we've been preaching it on this show about Cam Thomas. Like, 
damn, why is Steve Nash ain't letting him play? Damn, why is Jacques Vaughn ain't letting him play? And then next thing you know, next thing we know, the past few games, he's been busted 40 point games out of his ass. So yeah, that's the player y'all dropped at LSU. That's the player that should be contributing. That's the player that should be already in rotation. Instead of trying to make trades for, for veterans and whatnot, you got a cheap option on the bench. Hell, if they were smart enough to do this earlier with Cam Thomas, you could have filled out your roster a little bit better. Instead of trying to like give money to DeAndre Jordan who didn't do jack squat for you, you could have used those resources elsewhere. It's just the the Nets, man. It's just just one bad move after another. You you started to ponder. I don't know if you feel on this. You started to ponder if ownership sucks because you seen Kyrie say, "I'm glad Kevin got got out of this situation, all this stuff." You know, it's so bad that those two chose. And this is, I think, James Dolan needs to get some catch some heat for it for New York fans. They went to Brooklyn. That situation blows up in Joe Ty's face. From him, Sean Marks. And Sean Marks should not have a job after this season. You fumbled Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving. You brought in James Harden. Steve Nash. Could have been a combination of things. It didn't work out. You know? There's times where questions, rotations, stuff like that. Can he get the best out of these guys? It ultimately didn't work out. You know, in an alternate timeline, if Ime Yukata could could have just walked over to Brooklyn, would these two would would these two still be still be in Brooklyn right now? That's something to ponder. But you know, the league's you know stop that, but. Brooklyn's a mess. I don't know which way they're going to go. Ben Simmons. <sighs> God, it seems like they might be stuck with him. And a good thing about getting on these picks, if they're trying to up offload them, they can check like one or two of these picks just to get rid of them. So, you know, Joe's tied, you know, the Kyrie thing, trying to punish him, all that stuff. It didn't go the way that he wanted or all that stuff. Because a lot of people had support for Kyrie. Whatever you're against for him, tweeting the movie or not, you had a lot of people, you know, stood up for Kyrie and Kyrie didn't kind of buck down. And then when Kyrie came back, the team didn't, you know, they kind of, you know, rejuvenated themselves and they made a good streak until Kevin Durant got hurt. So, for the Nets, D-Lock, I don't know where they're going to go. Like I said, I think ownership, I don't think he's a good owner. Kind of look at things how it turned out. Sean Mark should not be a GM because look all the moves he has done. And I don't care. And, and some of y'all probably here to say, "Well, he got all these first round picks for all this, you know, all these folks and all that stuff." That don't mean squat. If you got James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving in the prime of their careers. Take out Ben Simmons out of the equation. Just those three right there. That should at least got you a championship, at least. Three scores like that, 
you should not falter at all. Now, now we'll agree at D-Lock. Kyrie's in Dallas. Kevin's in Phoenix. James is in Philly. And Ben Simmons is probably waiting for the new Resident Evil 4 remake to come out in March. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, to me, I, it seems like the, like I said, it, you started out with, you had, you had three different big threes. So called, they say. Um, and both of them failed. Yep. Both of them. So, to have that much talent on your roster, don't forget, you remember me saying this earlier this year and earlier last year? This is one of the better, this is one of the best rosters I've seen top to bottom I have ever seen. Yep. And I believe we agreed on that. You know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people did. And they just did, they disappointed. And I've seen a comparison. We'll talk about wrestling and trading. They, somebody had on Twitter saying, which one was the more the, the most disappointing? Was it the AD, Russ, and LeBron? Or was it the uh, Kevin Durant, James Harden, Kyrie? And it's obvious it was James Harden, KD, and uh, Kyrie. Yeah, all the expectation could have done so much. Uh, you moved James Harden for Ben Simmons, who we, I thought that, hey, you know, if you got him, he's going to be under, you know, Kyrie and KD, his confidence. Now he's out of Philly. We should see more from him. But as we know, for one, he's not a scorer. It's not him. I think he's a better defender. But it's just, you knew once Kyrie had requested out that KD was going to be next. But at some time, whether it was going to be prior to Thursday, um, prior to the day, or was it where there was going to be out in the offseason. So, um, they failed twice. Twice. So at this point, um, you wanted some young pieces. Cool, you have them. Uh, it seems like a lot of these teams... They're trying to, yeah, they're prepping for Ronnie James to come out or they're looking at this draft this year to get that number one overall pick. But it just, the team with so many expectations didn't even sniff the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, we talk about this all the time about, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, if it wasn't for LeBron starting in Miami and all these other teams wouldn't be doing it. Well, hell, you have other teams that have tried it and it has not worked. Yep. So even if you can say LeBron has done it and he's the one that started and everybody was doing it, first of all, in my eyes, I think Boston started. We got Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett. That's a different story for a different day. But if LeBron started it, LeBron got some titles out of it. There's plenty of other teams that try to get a big three. Um, have these conversations. They're best friends, as they say about Katie and Kyrie. And they couldn't even get to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yep. So at the end of the day, you've done the same thing or tried the same method, and it did not work. It's clearly that it, clearly something is missing with that. This is why leadership is so important. Yep. Because now that you don't have that, it don't matter who the hell you put on that team. You know, we talk about it all the time. Who would be your top five? Who would be your starting five and your all-time team? You could make the best starting five. But if there's no leadership there, things like this happen. And sacrifice. Yes. So, at the end of the day, I mean, looking at the roster, I mean, I'm looking at it myself like, damn, like, come on, man. At some point, they have Blake Griffin, Marcus Aldridge. Hell, Patty Mills, not necessarily uh, in prime Patty Mills, but off the bench player type Patty Mills. James Harden, Kevin Durant, Kyrie. I mean, what else do you want? I mean, you could not get that done. So for 
me, we can't be just the players. Because the coaches also have to play a huge part. Now, granted, you have players who say they don't need coaches, but it did not work. Either way, it did not work. Both methods, with Ben Simmons, with James Harden, it did not work. So, at the end of the day, they need to figure out what the hell they're doing in Brooklyn. Right now, the bright side that they have is Cam Thomas. Please don't mess up his career. Because remember, we were we, we were live when he when he got drafted. And we were like, well, hell, that's a that's a hell of a pickup. Mm-hmm. Like you got somebody off the bench. You already got Kyrie and KD. Um, you got some guy that's some you know shooters, and now you go grab you another one that can get. You know, he was doing his thing at LSU. He's been saying recently in post conferences, well, once he gets the minutes, you know, he knows he's capable of been doing it. He had three forty point games back to back to back. Now he's not gonna hold that up every game. But that shows you what he is capable of. This team, this front office is going to get in the way of, the, uh, of, of what they can do. Um, so, Brooklyn doesn't seem like a, a smart place to be at right now. Yep. It's just, like the Nets won tonight against the Bulls who, <laughs> whoo. You want to talk? Well, we'll get to our wins, losers series in a little bit, but you want to talk about a loser, the Chicago Bulls. But you know they they went today against the uh, Chicago Bulls. You know Dinwiddie back in Brooklyn, Brooklyn played twenty five minutes. I mean thirty nine minutes, twenty five points. Cam Thomas twenty points in thirty three minutes in the starting role. De'Aaron Sharp. 12 rebounds, 8 points. Like more, a big man that should be playing more. And it, and here's another thing about Brooklyn, D-Lock. They're talking about, well, we need another big man. Down Nichols, Clax, and all that stuff. You got another, that same draft. Darren Sharp, right behind him. You got to play these kids. I mean, I know you see different things in practice and stuff like that. But at times, you got to throw the kids out there and see what they can do for you. You know, you, you got to see what these young guys can do for you. And can, and De'Aaron Sharp can uh, get almost double digits and stuff like that. You know, off the bench and rebounding and all that stuff. You got to play him. You got to play him over guys like, you know, Joe Harris and whatnot. Ben Simmons came off the bench tonight for Brooklyn. And I think that type of role is kind of best for him. Eight points, eight rebounds, four assists. I think that's probably like best role for him. So, we'll see. Like I said, I think Brooklyn, as they are right now, I think they'll still make the playoffs. You know, you add uh, Mikel Bridges into the fold. I don't know who comes out the starting lineup, either Finley Smith or O'Neal. But once Bridges get there, I think they'll be straight, and we'll see how about they go things. But to put a ball, Brooklyn. I think the major question is, or the next one is, do they? How do they move Ben Simmons in the off season? Because you can't keep him keep him around. And keeping him around, the only way you probably keep him around because nobody wants, wants to take on that contract right now. And him, you know, giving up minimal effort. But, like I said, Brooklyn looked pretty good tonight. I guess a Chicago team that should have did something. Yeah, seemed like they were for a minute. Definitely seemed like they were trying to do something anyway. 
let's head to the next big trade. That happened, I think, like mid-morning or close to the afternoon. There are like rubblings that the three-team the three team trade between the Lakers, Timberwolves, and Jazz was happening. But also, it kind of hinges on Minnesota's part. Which I think, from what I gather from reports, I think the Lakers and Jazz had a deal. If Minnesota falls out. But Minnesota was gained. They got rid of Russell. And the Lakers received Malik Beasley, D'Angelo Russell, Jared Vanderbilt. Minnesota receives Nikhil Alexander Walker, Mike Conley, a 24, 2024 second round pick from Memphis or Washington. Less favorable v. the Lakers. Utah also, I mean, Minnesota also receives Utah's 2025 second round pick and Utah's 2026 second round pick. The Jazz received Damon Jones from the Lakers, who was a waste of a signing. Juan Toscato Anderson, who was kind of like a disappointment signing because he didn't do more. The contract of Russell Westbrook, the Lakers 2027 first round pick, top four protected, turns into a 27, 27 second rounder if not conveyed. The Lakers came out pretty damn good in that trade, did they? Oh yeah, I mean you—that—that that is a complete roster uh, change. I mean to go grab, you know, uh, hella shooters is what they did. We ain't got you, D'Angelo Russell, uh, very good shooter. You ain't got Malik Beasley, very good shooter, who I think could be a six-man candidate. Uh, Jared Vanderbilt, who was a shooter, a big that can shoot, um, and only to really give up. Russ, uh, now, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, DeAndre Russell's not a true point guard. You know, he's just a shooter. He's not going to direct offense. You don't need him to do all that. That's not what you really need in, you know, with the offense with LeBron and Anthony Davis. You need shooters is what you need. Um, and to grab those three guys was a huge land, knowing that they got Hunter Moore earlier in the season as well. So, I like, I honestly, um, between this trade and the Brooklyn check trade, this definitely changed a lot for the Lakers. Um, now, hopefully, it was made in time for them to get a chemistry right so they can start stacking W's, um, start moving up the charts in, in the playoffs. Like I said earlier, the West is, is, is really, really uh, insane. Um, but then we still got to hear what Russ is going to do. Like, if he get bought out, uh, where does he land? You know, there's a few places that they're saying that he may go. So, uh, but for me, does Malik Beasley off the bench with with Russ uh, and Vanderbilt? I think we, only, we ain't gonna really see LeBron have to go go for 38 a game anymore. I think he's gonna get a little bit of rest now moving forward because these guys, these are some a hell of a lot better efficient shooters than what he had with Russ and uh, others. Yeah. Like that's the big thing for me, um, and I'm not. I don't really see D'Angelo Russell as a turnover machine like that. So you minimize the turnovers and you have better efficient shooting. Um, this is a major, major plus for the Lakers. Let me go to Minnesota real quick. I think you know. Get Mike Conley, get somebody stable for that point guard spot, I think was kind of much needed for that team. Because like you mentioned about D'Angelo Russell, he's not a real true point guard. And getting Conley there to kind of be a setup man, going to be a decent point guard for them at his age, I think that is what what they Minnesota kind of needed. You know? And, you know, you have a lineup backcourt for him and Anthony Edwards. You know, whoever they rotate between the three-man towns when he gets back and go bare. So, I think it's a good move for Minnesota. You know, get, getting Alexander Walker, you get another wing right there to help scoring on the wing and stuff like that. Behind Anthony Edwards. 
So I thought that was a good move for the Timberwolves for the short term. The Jazz getting uh, rest book and getting that contract out the books, but I think it's the, the first round pick that they, you know, they highly co- covet. You know, Damon Jones, Toscano Anderson, kind of disappointment signings. I figured they would do more with those guys, but or those guys would kind of take advantage of the t- time to you know make something of themselves, but they never did. You know. You know, for Toscano to Anderson, really, you know, to really make an impact, it's just like, damn, dude, you got a chance here. And I think this is where Rob Palenka, yeah, he did a good move here, but he kind of deserves some criticism, criticism because he kind of put this team in the, in the spot to kind of do all these moves in the first place. Signing like a Toscano Anderson, you know, trading for Pat Beverly, signing Dennis Schroeder, you know, um, Damon Jones. You knew what you had to get. And you kind of signed these guys who, who really couldn't shoot like that. You know, not the world's best sports floor spacers. Can't create their own shots. Uh, it's like you're kind of handicapping your team from the jump. And, you know, you, you found a way to get offload them, but you didn't kind of, you kind of didn't have to put yourself in this situation in the first place. Like me, you talked about this after the show last week. And we went over like a boatload of names that you know are current free agents right now. And I was like, I was like, damn, a lot of these guys could have fit this roster better than who they initially signed. And then like, I don't know what happened with the Miles Leonard and Demarcus Cousins workouts. They didn't sign them for whatever reason. But yeah, those two guys out there just walling in the wind. But to get Malik Beasley, to get Jared Vanderbilt, and also to get Daniel Jam- Russell back into the fold of things, which I've been on record on this show before, he should never been traded away from the Lakers in the first place. If you kind of look back at it, Magic Johnson deserves some blame how this this Lakers roster has kind of turned into. Yep. Because if they kept, this is no shade to Nick Young. But I'm not getting rid of my second overall pick that I drafted for maturity reasons. You just, for Magic Johnson, you tell the kid, bring him to the office, say, hey, don't do that crap again. Now, if it's stupid for Nick Young to share that information with a young, immature person, that's on him. He got to know better. You're talking about like a decade difference in age between those two, at least. You got to think smarter than that. But I'm not taking a journeyman over my second overall pick who I expect to help lead my franchise back to glory. So, but now, oh, but what happened then, you know, hopefully he matured. Now he's back into the fold of things. And yet, and yet, Taryn, yeah, I hope it, D'Angelo Russell uh, learned from that, from that mistake. Yeah, I hope, you know, that's behind him. I know some people still like to poke phone on, on it, which I don't know, I understand why. It's like beating a dead horse, but wherever the case to be, 
I think this is a move, hopefully, that can make a, uh, a, a wrong and make it to a right for this franchise. Daniel Russell can play off the ball. Uh, 6'5", combo guard. Kind of perfect to help out LeBron what he got to do. So, I like the moves to getting Russell. You got a younger point guard, in a sense. You didn't trade for Kyle Lowry, who's in his mid-30s. I just turned 35 two days ago. Me and Kyle Lowry about the same age. You didn't trade, need to trade somebody for that type of age. You didn't trade for Terry Rozier, who's a streaky as hell shooter. You know, you didn't trade for Buddy Heald, who at times is about as streaky as Terry Rozier. So, kudos for them to get DeAndre Russell back to the fold. We'll just hope they can keep him there. Yeah, I mean, I think this is what his last year in his contract. Yeah, and and from what I read, yeah, and from what I read, they are open to a contract extension. So, if things go well, hey, things are kind of looking up and up. And, oh, yeah. And, and if Anthony Davis can stay healthy and all that stuff, and future and Rui Hichimara kind of developed better and all that stuff, I think L.A. will be okay. And then you get like the veterans like like a Steph Curry, Seth Curry and down the line coming for you to play for cheap and, you know, Reggie Jackson, all that type of stuff. And then you get those type of veterans, okay, I want to go play for L.A. I want to play with the, uh, Daniel Russell, Anthony Davis, Hootra Mar, you know, those guys, LeBron. So, I mean, I like it for the Lakers because they get the scoring and, sh- and, and shooting that they need. But I just kind of hate that some of the moves, like the past administration and this one, kind of led them up to this point. Well, you basically let some years go by. Yep. You know, and realize that damn that was the wrong mistake or something like that a wrong move to go back to get her I mean at this point let time go by and now that you have him it's like okay now you're trying to move in that you know direction to, to approach those that that the title chase and my thing is you could have had him you could have been building around him around this whole time You know what I'm saying? You could have did a lot more. Now, granted, you did go get Malik Beasley, who was in the Utah, or man, it got him and Vanderbilt with it. But um, if he's there in the beginning, you know, who's to say where the Lakers are right now? So it's it's right now. Like I said, hopefully now they they you know moving forward, they have him now. D'Angelo Russell keep him with him and Anthony Davis, you know, post LeBron. And, um, you know, try to show what you have. I mean, like I said, it's, it's going to be Lakers. So people are always going to, you got players are always going to consider going to L.A. And now you have some type of foundation, you know. Um, even though they're still in win now mode, they still can win, you know, even when LeBron retires. And then let me ask you this. Russell Westbrook is a buyout candidate. The Heat, the Bulls, don't know why. And the Clippers has expressed interest in Russell. Where do you foresee him winding up? Me 
me, um, I need to see this buyout go through. Because I believe, because many don't believe Russ is going to take like half of what he's owed. He's going to want all his damn money. Um, I mean, I, I see apparently Paul George is trying to recruit him to the Clippers. Yep. So I can see him going to staying in L.A. You know, but uh, hell, even I don't I don't see him paying out even that over there with, with the Clippers. I mean, at this point, yeah, they already got the guy that they rotated. We'll talk about a couple of guys that they traded, but I mean, do I see him making a, a huge difference going over there with them? Not really. Um, like a big impact. I don't see that. So, uh, for me, I think it. I think it will, it will be the Clippers, uh, being the fact that he, you know, does probably does definitely doesn't want to go back west coast. I don't think with how uh, the whole situation with Kyle Lahr, do you really want to bring Russ into that situation, into that culture, like you know, with a Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler, bam, definitely don't see it. So. I think he do. I think he does land in, with the Clippers, the Bulls. I don't even know why the hell. I'm on the same. I'm, I'm with you. I don't know what will be the point of going to grab him. Not <laughs> possible. But I just don't know. Yeah, I don't know what would be the purpose. You already got all the damn guards, so it's all. It's, it's hard to find a rotation with the guards that you got. Let alone bring them Westbrook in the fold. So. Um, I think the Clippers is the team. Um, I, I can't see any other team right now. I'm trying to think of another team. Maybe they'll come to me before the show. But right now, I think it's I think the Clippers is is the is the leading candidate right now for me. Ah, uh, I'll power work him real quick. The Bulls. I don't foresee that happening. I. I I think Russ wants to make the playoffs. I, I mean, I'm not saying the Bulls can make the play in, whatever, but I just like, like you said, even with Alonzo being out, they still have a glut at guard. Dragic, Caruso, White, um, what's that kid's name? Um, God, what's that kid's name? Uh, Levine, uh, Samu. That's like a, that's like five guards I just named off. Right there. So I, I don't see the fit right there. To be honest with you. It now it comes down to the Clippers in the heat. If he goes to Miami, maybe that help motivate and push Lowry because they were almost almost thinking about training Kyle Lowry multiple times here the past couple weeks. It didn't happen. But they it seemed like they want to add Russ there, but on a good price. So I think Miami may be the move, but if Paul George is reaching out to him like this, you know, John Wall is gone. You know, that didn't work out like some folks at, at probably hoped. And I'm kind of curious where he goes after he get bought off from the Rockets. But what, what, a, what coincidence of John Wall getting trade back to the Rockets and he said all that stuff about the you know, his time in Houston. Not bad stuff, but, you know, it's just talking about his time in Houston and all that stuff. And he get, gets traded back there, but. Yeah. But. If Russ want to stay in wanna stay in L.A., then I think the Clippers be the move. You know, Reggie Jackson is gone also. Which kind of somewhat surprised me, but. Ever since they put Terrence Mann in the starting lineup, you know, things have been kind of kosher. Yeah, you can kind of see it coming, yeah. So I was like, 
I think Russ may stay in LA. You know, Terry Rodriguez saying uh, these are that the Clippers getting Westbrook and Westbrook going off with them will be a biggest slap in the face for the Lakers. That's a it good really would. that that is a good point to bring up because like today, you know, in our band account and stuff like that, you know, Larry saw what I, you know, tweeted earlier about ESPN and some dude, I forgot the dude's name, but ESPN is, you know, so funny about ESPN, they just bring out some of these random journalists just, just to say stuff. Like when the Cole Kyrie situation have, have going down. They brought out this one dude I never heard of that works for ESPN. And then after that whole Kyrie situation had died down, I never we never heard from that dude again. Next thing you know, I seen it today. Some dude for ESPN. Let me pull it up. Cause he bringing somebody new out there. <laughs> well, I don't think he's new, but it's just like Dave McMinnon, a dude, a dude that looks like he probably got a cubicle somewhere for Tesla somewhere in Texas or in San Fran working for Google. Talking about Russ being a vampire in the locker room. If Russ was that bad, why did Lakers just move on from him earlier? Mm-hmm. I mean, I know you won't wait till the trade deadline to do your stuff sometimes, but if he was that bad, why wait? This is true. Now, who's feeding him this stuff? I don't know. I think the people kind of recognizing the BS that folks like ESPN are doing. I think they tired. I think they tired the national media perspective, and not just in sports, but I think in this in general, it's like. You know, CNN, MSNBC, Fox. You know, ESPN, Fox Sports, Skip Bayless, Stephen A. You know, all these folks, they kind of like, they come up here and say, say all this wild stuff and people are tired of it. You know, like a couple of days ago when Kyrie got traded and seeing Stephen A and then, um, what's that fool's name for New York? Uh, Mad Dog. Oh, yeah. You know, they talking about Kyrie being a poison everywhere he went. You know, he left Boston. He poisoned Boston. He left Cleveland poisoned. Blah, 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 blah. Well, let's look at that point real quick. When Kyrie left Cleveland got traded from Cleveland. <clears throat> Didn't the Cavs make it back to the finals? <coughs> that year. Mm. They made the finals again. That same year in Boston, that Boston young court almost took the Cavs to seven games, almost made to the NBA finals. Without Kyrie, and he didn't play in that playoff run most of it. And now look, now look where this Boston team is at. How can you poison a team and and things really didn't crumble to the ground? You got two of the best duos in the NBA, in Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. How the hell is that poisonous? You, if you, if he's that bad, you got rid of him. Things move along right well. Poison stays around for for a very long time, unless you can cure it. You 
now we look at the Brooklyn situation. A lot of factors gone to things. And now look where Brooklyn's at now. I'm not sitting here saying Kyrie, you know, did everything by the book. But, you know, coming with things coming out now about the ownership and everything else. Look how things look now. Now, we'll see how things go out about in Dallas, but, you know, you can't call this guy a poison. And this dude calling Russell Westbrook a vampire. Come on now. Really? Even like LeBron's kids were kind of sad that Westbrook got traded. I don't know if you saw that or not. I think the middle son, the middle child, you know. Bronny, I think. Not Bronny, Bryce. Bryce, he... I think somebody screenshot or something he posted on, on Instagram saying it was an L that he got traded. So, you know, the kids are like kind of like a real d- direct link <laughs> or source to LeBron in a sense. If the kids saying that they kind of hated seeing him going, what did that tell you? Yeah, that is true. That tell you how close he was or how he didn't really want to run the lead like that. This was like, come on now, y'all, y'all, y'all got to do better than that. And some, and this ain't like 20 years ago when some of these media people can say what they want and people can check them like that. I mean, I'm not saying the athletes did check reporters and stuff like that, but nowadays you got the regular Joe to go in here and check these people just like that. And I'm pretty sure Russ, I mean, Russ can stick up for his own stuff. We've seen that before. But this is like, come on, fellas, really a vampire? I have, I sometimes I have, I, I question Darvin Ham at times. You know, I question Darvin Ham sometimes. Like, damn dog, um, what are you doing? Can, can you get your hands out of your pockets and do something? You know. You know, one one game, I forgot what game, it was like a couple months ago. It was around Christmas time, D-Lock in. And if y'all watch Lego games, Darmer Hand wears the same black, you know, tracksuit, whatever. And my dad said, man, I'm tired of seeing him wearing that damn black tracksuit. I'm going to buy him a suit and send it to him. Tired of looking at that damn suit. I mean, the black track. I was like, well... That's what they're comfortable in, man. <laughs> and I think sometimes Darwin Hill, he's sometimes too comfortable in what he does. He don't want to shake things up. You know, with the Max Christie kid, he's playing him a little more. I kind of wish Scotty Pippen Jr. would got some run and kind of see what he can do. You know, they got rid of the Matt Ryan dude. And the Matt Ryan dude, he goes to Minnesota and he's getting decent time in Minnesota. And that's a shooter right there that, you know, they kind of need it. So I do at times question Darvin him, his rotations and stuff like that. I, I get that. But it's just like the vampire comment. Come on now. We could do better than that. I hope. But this, hey, but this is why we do this show here. <laughs> You know, when I said, yeah. you know, when I said, you know, this is what you know, ESPN wondering why, you know, they, they're losing viewers. They saying silly stuff like this on a daily basis. And people get tired of that crap. I kind of surprised Skip Bayless still get attention. It's like, dog, you just saying stuff to say stuff. 
And, you know, to, to the chat, to my Cali people, I mean, y'all probably more in two with us. You know, and Terrence already said, you know, Russ wasn't all that bad with the Lakers. You know, Russ, from the, Russ is from the city. I don't think Russ was trying to self-sabotage being in L.A. to play for the Lakers, play for close to $50 million, play close to home in Compton. Why would he mess that up? I know at times, you, you know, you can't go back home. But, I mean, for us, this is like a different situation. And I know he don't run with those type of crowds and stuff like that. But why, I mean, why he would screw that up? I'll leave that word on that. I, I, I think that, you know, for one, you know, being back, Cali was, was big. So I, like I said, I don't think he'll... You messed that up at all. I actually see, um, believe, you know what I'm saying? His wife saying that it's, you know, it's, he, she has, eight, they have uh, school age children who have listened to their, their peer to peer nasty thing that they say on television about, you know, Russ. I guess I would prepare myself to explain to my five year old that his, his dad is not actually a vampire. So, uh, you know, these things are are said. You know, it's kind of going to what you're saying, different different things. But even with that, being back home, is what I'm pretty sure is what Russ Russ definitely loves. So, uh, like I said, I, as far as him leaving, going all the way to the east, I just don't see that. Now, that ha I believe that happens if the Clippers just don't want want him. Um, which I, I doubt, you know, uh, especially, you know, now that they lost a few, a few guards. Um, but for me, I, like I said, he, uh, John Wall going back to Houston, I believe Luke Kennard got traded today as well. Yeah. So, you know, right now you're looking at, they, they made a couple, you know, big trades that would have me think they didn't want to go after Russ. But, um, you know, I'm pretty sure his destination, you know, number one destination would be to stay in L.A. You know, at that point, playing the same stadium, you really don't have to move anything. You know, you're just basically swapping jerseys. So, I think he, I think he stays in, I think, I think both of us are agreeing that he stays in L.A. if he gets bought out. And stays and signs with the Clippers. I don't see him going out east. <sighs> Unless Chicago gets him a hell of a contract. I don't see that foresee that happening. But I think he stays with the Clippers and you know, make him run in the playoffs and kind of show everybody what's up. And with, you know, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George. Playing very well. You know, I think that could be a motivate, motivating factor as well. You know, for Russell Westbrook. So, we'll, we'll see what uh, happens with Russell Westbrook here in the next couple of days. Jay Crowder goes to Milwaukee for three second round picks. Also in that trade, George Hill, Serge Ibaka, and Jordan Nora, and two second round picks go to the Pacers. Milwaukee, you know, gets Jay Crowder. And of course, Indiana has turned around and waived Serge Ibaka. So I'm kind of curious if he gets picked up at all. But D Lock looking from at the Milwaukee side of things, getting Jay Crowder. How does he fit with this team? I love the trade, to be honest with you. I mean, for me, 
You got Grayson Allen, you know, watching right now. You got Connor Hogan. You, you, know, you got your hella shooters on that team around Giannis. Um, I think that what they were trying to do with Serge Ibaka uh, is what they're going to try to do the same with um, Sam. They're going to try to do with Jay Crowder. But Jay Crowder is that that three and D. You know, he could, he could definitely shoot you know, and play defense at the same time. So I think that he's going to fit in perfect. Uh, now, the thing is, we haven't seen Jay Crowder all season. So it's going to take him some time to get in. But we know Milwaukee wants to have uh, a defense. You know, they're going to have some defenders. That's what they're built around. You know, they got some defenders, a few shooters, you know, around Giannis. But having those, uh, having those, uh, guys is going to be huge, you know, and having him get into that rotation is going to be big. So, you know, I'm loving the, the, the crowd of trade, and I think that he's going to fit in perfect over there. And it, it's definitely needed just because now um, it gives – now, you know, when Giannis is on the court, Giannis is going to get a hell of a lot. But now you give him a chance to get a little bit of rest, you know, which is, he doesn't need a lot, lot, but he just needs just enough. Um, to get him situated. So I think that bringing N.J. Crowder, that was a hell of a pickup. I think, you know, getting Crowder was very solid. I think, you know, you needed kind of that tweener forward in case you go small and stuff like that. And I'm not saying Bobby Portis can stretch the floor for you, but defensively, if you you know you playing against you know Philly, and that guy lined up out there for Joel Embiid, you know uh, PJ Tucker and Tobias Harris out there, you can stick you know. Crowder on Tobias Harris and shut him out. And then maybe, you know, slide Chris Middleton on P.J. Tucker and kind of, you know, have Middleton fresh, you know, fresh to a point at the end of games for, like, last second shots or something like that. But I think it's a good move. I think it's, uh, you didn't never got nothing out of Serge Ibaka, so you can wipe that slate clean. Um... Uh, if if you resign him, I think it'd be a good move for for this team. Um, checking them on right now. They're playing the Lakers tonight. As a matter of fact, come on now. And they're up five on the Lakers right now. Ninety nine, ninety four. So, you know, Milton still come off the bench. I think he'll, he'll be factored more in the rotation when he gets in because they're playing like a lot of guards right now. But I think they he definitely take the minutes away from Wesley Matthews and Javon Carter. Yeah. Yeah. And I think probably a good thing as well. And then if you want to go super, I mean, super small, you have Giannis at the five at times and Crowder at that four and you have Lopez out depending on matchups. You know, against whoever you're playing. But I like the move for the Bucks. I think, you know, You know, will be enough, and I think more for the Bucks is just the health of Chris Middleton. If he's back up to speed, I mean, he's playing right now, but if he's getting more repetition and stuff like that, and feeling more better by himself, I think I like Milwaukee's chances to get back to the finals. Yeah, he's going to be. You know, his health is probably the major priority outside of Giannis um, being Giannis because. Right now, it seems like they do have him on that minute restriction a little bit. I don't even think he's really starting right now, to be honest with you. I think he's actually coming off the bench right now just to monitor, monitor the minutes. 
Uh, so if he can keep, they can keep him up healthy, keep him at 100 percent when he gets there. That'd be that'd be great for them. Uh, but even with that, like I said, he he's also another player that you mix in with Jay Crowder. Uh, that's going to be a, a team that has defense and can shoot, which is what they need, and also length. And then kind of just looking at the next trade. <sighs> Mobama to the Lakers. Mobama goes to the Lakers. Orlando receives Patrick Beverly. Likely to be bought out. And second round pick cast considerations. I'll let you speak on the Mobama Mo era, era for Orlando. I mean, we talked about it. Three years ago, I said that, you know, you went, you got more Bomber, knowing that you had Vooch, now you got to pick who in the hell you want. So now they say, okay, cool, we're going to keep, we're going to go with more Bomber. Then, they ain't satisfied with more Bomber, so they go trade Wendell Carter. So for me, who was drafted the same year, in fact, drafted the very next pick after Wendell, after Mobamba. So historically, we know, you know, the Shaq situation going to L.A., the Dwight Howard situation going to L.A. This seems like a tradition that happened every eight to ten years. Now, you know, I'll let you speak on it later, whether he, he, Turns out like White did in L.A. and Shaq did in L.A. But for me, um, hell, I'm happy that they got rid of from Obama, man. I mean, I haven't seen nothing worth of what we drafted him for. And for me, if it, you know, as good of a player as he is, there's nothing. He didn't make that big of an impact on us at all. So... You know, you trading him away, which you should have been dead hell. Uh, now uh, you have some more space, and then you go get Beverly, which I told you, like I said before, man, there's some teams that get just that trade players just to be involved before the deadline. And that's what the hell happened. The Magic was that team. You went and got Patrick Beverly, who I'm seeing right now that he's not uh, required to even show up on that. Therefore, he's probably going to get bought out. Um, and then you get your second round pick, which hell, right now the way they draft, they don't know what the hell they're doing outside of this past year. So to me, um, you knew you're gonna lose more Bamba, so at this point, you trade him uh, to a team that basically probably want wants uh, bigs for the the uh, rotation and. Now, uh, when their car is the guy, so and I think they, they extended him that last year anyway. So for me, um, I think it was a it was a lateral move. Um, like I said, I'm glad the ma the magic did get off because you're gonna have to, like I said, you put, you're gonna either pay him or you're gonna let him walk. More likely, you're gonna let him walk. You're gonna get anything. You're gonna get anything. Therefore, at least you had got something. It just Hell, you ain't gonna do nothing with Patrick, Patrick Beverly. I mean, he's not gonna do anything. Hell, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but after they traded for D'Angelo Russell, he had tweeted, uh, they back on the same team or something like that. Yeah, I think he loves Russell. Yeah. But he, he, you know, he, he, he definitely vibes with, uh, D'Angelo Russell. So when they traded for, you know, for him, you know, he went out there and tweeted. He said, yeah, you know, he, he's back. The gang is back and such and such. And then, and then 10 minutes later, he gets traded to Orlando. So, uh, but all in all, I mean, we know the Magic are rebuilding. So that's why I said I don't even see Beverly necessarily even showing up. I see him getting bought as well. Now, this, we're talking about what Russ is going. It's going to be very interesting to see where the hell Patrick Beverly goes. Hearing that Minnesota has an interest to bring him back. So we'll keep an eye on that. 
But, uh, you know, getting off the Mo Bamba, it was bound to happen. I want to share to y'all, and Tamar Regan's, uh, you know, Terrence saying, you know, is Mo Bamba minus sus- suspension an upgrade from Thomas Bryant or a downgrade from Thomas Bryant? That's an interesting question right there. What you think, D Lock? Is Thomas Bryant. What's a, be- what's a better big to have right now? Obama or Thomas Bryant? I mean, for me, without question, it's Thomas Bryant. I mean, I've seen what he's doing in rotation. Um, he's earned that rotation. You know, we talked about before, hell, if Obama can't earn a damn rotation with the rebuilding Orlando Magic, what the hell are you going to do with the Lakers? So for me, I think it's Thomas Bryant. Um, sucks the fact that he end up wanting to, you know, requesting out, go somewhere, end up getting traded to Denver. But Thomas Bryant, uh, showing the defensive side as well, with you know, cleaning up the glass and scoring. So uh, for me, Thomas Bryant, I think he filled in pretty well with for. Uh, Anthony Anthony Davis. Now, granted, the 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 frame that Mo Bamba has, I mean, what he can, what he what he brings to the table, you know, he has the body for it. He can be very good for a while, but does he get there? You know, where's his mind at? I mean, the potential is obviously there, but I mean, we thought the same thing hell in 2018 when we drafted him. Just didn't get there. So, uh, for me, Thomas Bryant right now, oh, yeah, I think he's a better. But knowing that Thomas Bryant has been traded, you know, now the Lakers are in a situation where you know, they don't have a big. Now, Devon Reed, I think, actually played pretty decent with the Nuggets when he gets the minutes, but being the fact that he was under Jokic, it he was barely, barely getting minutes. So, um, now you have him, you got Reed and Obama fighting for those minutes, you know, and Gabriel Hill fighting for those minutes behind AD. So, I mean, right now, I've seen Obama start and seen what he has done with those minutes. And it wasn't nothing too impressive. But for some reason, I don't know if it's the time zone difference or they drinking some good ass water over there in LA. Uh, I don't know if it's just the fact that you got on a purple and gold jersey. But for some damn reason, some players, Orlando Magic players specifically, go to LA and turn into a totally different player. I don't know what it is. I don't know why. I don't know who in the hell is up to it, what's going on. Maybe Shaq started it. But players go over there, and they turn into a totally different player. So, I, like I said, I don't think it's an upgrade, but, hell, yeah, in a couple of years, you might be talking about Mo Bamba averaging 12, boys, 12 rebounds a game or something in L.A. At first, when I saw Thomas Bryant got traded, I was like, damn, man. Y'all got a young big man for cheap for two years. But then, after that, Chris Haynes tweeted out saying that Thomas Bryant requested the trade because his playing time has dwindled since Anthony Davis has come back. And I said to myself, like, dude, it's Anthony Davis. How long do you expect him to stay fully healthy for a good stretch? If I was him, I mean, I know the rent would come due with him because I think he, you know, outplayed his contract. You know, let's be real about that. And then, 
I want to share y'all this comment on YouTube. I said about this, about the Mobama trade. Train away a solid defender for a dude who can't crack the rotation on Orlando. Like you alluded to, a big man that couldn't crack the rotation in rebuild mode. Even after draft trade away Vooch. And then you trade away Vooch for another big man in the same damn draft class. And you still can't crack the rotation. Obama's getting DM DMPs and all that stuff. This guy would like to say it because Orlando is trash. The Lakers have guys that would draw attention off him and he would get easy looks. You got no ball, man. We had too many cards, bro. And then he said this like, we need a big man. Thomas requested a trade last minute. Yeah, no shit. And we had to make a trade. Not necessary, but go ahead. It wasn't a lot of time left. Had to counter back fast with the big man. The lot. We've been talking about Mobile for years. I'm not saying you're not saying that he can turn into something here in LA. I comment to the dude said, I changed the scenery could help Mobama. Mobamba. But we have to wait and see. I know the Lakers have had interest in Mobama for from last year. But the deal didn't get done and Orlando re signed them for that big deal. The twenty year uh, deal. Which is still a head scratcher. If Obama works out, hey, perfect. Perfect. If he can be at like a true defender down low in the paint with this link, all that stuff, that would be perfect. But as you as Orlando Magic fan, I think you see enough, you have seen enough of Obama to say, I don't know. Me, as a basketball player, seeing Obama, I don't know. At least in Pat Bab, I know what I, I, I know what I have. With Obama, I don't know what I'm getting. This dude's trying to say that with new guys, of course, in the fold, that we'll get him easy looks and all that stuff. Who's to say that? You know, for, with Thomas Bryan D. Lock, that dude hustled his ass off. He's not. He wasn't the world's best defender, but I mean, he was competent. But he hustled. He got his points. He finished him out of room rim very well. I can't say that about Mobama. And if you're trying to big up yourself, talk yourself up about this, about a big man, and then with the potential buyout market, you know, a potential uh, big man, uh, a big man better than this, then why make this trade? Why take take on the salary? I would have grabbed Miles Leonard and DeMarcus Cousins for cheap. But if Obama works out, hey, it, it's great. It's great for him, great for the franchise. But I'm not seeing... This is like a wait and see for me. Yeah, you don't know for sure. And that's what it was in Orlando, I mean... He would have a game and then just disappear for the next, like, two months. Yep. And they won't see him again. And then it's like you would go against teams like Charlotte who just let 
sinners eat on them, and he won't do anything. So for me, I, I couldn't, I didn't know what to expect from him. And we're talking about a guy that was picked, I believe, in the sixth overall. People, I hope, I, w- I want y'all to know that SGA, Shay Gibson Alexander, was drafted in that same draft. Four, five picks later. And you see what he's doing. I said it to say, we know what you got in SGA. The guy's killing it right now. But we don't know what Mo Bomb. He'll have a game or two and then just fall off the face of the, face of the earth. So for me, it just was like, okay, cool. Let's go on here and, you know, move this guy. Now, it was harder just because you had Booch. You traded Booch. Now you put more pressure on making sure he's doing what he needs. But at this point, and we don't know, you know, but it's also it's a thing to where, you know, you are with on a LeBron-led team. And those expectations of doing so much. It's not, uh, not there. So, but dude, like I said, man, for me, it was just destined he was gonna go to LA. I mean, we've done it twice already, so I've already expected. But again, uh, I believe this is his last chance contract. No, he. he, he has, I think. Yeah, I think. Right. I think. Yeah, he got another year. He got extended, correct. Yeah, I, I remember that. So you're gonna have him for another year and see what he does. What what he does. But it's just for me, man. Like I'm, I honestly, like I said, I'm glad that we got off of him. Wish him the best. But I wouldn't be surprised either way. If he didn't really do too much, or when he came out there and was just all star, I wouldn't be surprised. So, we'll see about more Obama. I just, I don't, I don't know, man. We'll see. Next trade, we're trying to zip through these. James Wiseman to Detroit, Sadiq Bay to Atlanta, Gary Payton the second, going back to Golden State. Uh, Portland receives Kevin Knox in the trade and five first round, I mean five second round picks. What are your thoughts on this one? Because for me. Sadiq Bay going to Atlanta, you know, seems I want to say odd fit, but it just kind of feels like I don't know. It just feels kind of like a lateral move for them. I'm not saying he could fit there, but it's just like you had like a whole bunch of wings and stuff there. Why well, take on another one? You know, Gary Payton going back to the Warriors, I think a good move for him because he wasn't doing nothing in Portland. But I think the big one is just James Wiseman going to Detroit. But I, I'm thinking to myself, well, damn, didn't last deadline they traded for Marvin Bagley? They got Isaiah Stewart. And Jalen Durham. And Jalen Duran. I think to myself, okay, I, I like it that he got out of going to state because I don't think Steve Kerr can coach big man. I think he prefers big man to be garbage guys down low and just clean up down there. I don't think he can develop a big man that can score and, and you know, throw down to the paint and, and get points and stuff like that, face up at the basket, at the free throw line, stuff like that. I don't think he had that confidence in James Wiseman. I don't think, and I don't think as a coach, I don't think he had that confidence to and patience. I think the main thing is patience to develop James Wiseman, in which he had all the time in the world because you got a ready-made roster already. That's the thing that killed me about this. It's like I'm not saying rush the guy, but it's like you kind of had a little time to kind of build up. Bring him along, and you screw the pooch on it, and you screw the pooch and not develop the other two guys along with them. I mean, you kept Kaminga because I think he'd been more in the rotation, 
And Draymond's probably all set and gone, and Kaminga may be put into that role next season. But Moody, you know, he barely gets time. Wiseman, he didn't get no time. So, I, I, I'm interested to see how he fits in Detroit. If they, if they can get some stuff out of him, D. Lock, great. Because between him, K. Cunningham, Jaden Ivy, you got to get something out of those three guys. K. Cunningham. The thing is too. Sorry to cut you. The thing is with Wiseman, he's basically doing the same damn thing Obama was doing, like. Getting no type of minutes. Yep. On a team that with a very with a very small roster. Yep. Like when it comes to big, like we were saying that Michael Green get more minutes than Wiseman. So for me, it just you know what I'm saying. Like that's the kind of stuff that makes you. Now you go to a team that has more bigs that they already kind of fit in their rotation. You know, Isaiah Stewart is. Starting to come, starting to play pretty decent. Jalen Dern is really playing good. So uh, for me, like they're starting to get in a good rotation, getting their minutes. And now you bring in another guy because this is be like a short stop for Wiseman. Like this team is young too, very young. But hell, for them moving off of Sadiq Bay, I wasn't expecting. I was expecting Bogdanovich to be gone before him. Yeah. So. Uh, for me, it was just, I don't, to be honest, we still trying to figure out what the hell he's holding on to him for at this point. Especially you giving him, you getting ready to get young piece. So you really think all over again. So, again, I, I think, hopefully, like you said, getting that rotation would be good, but I'm already looking at two bigs right now, Stewart and, Stewart and, uh, Duran that's going to take up a bulk of the minutes at the five. So he might be in the same situation he was in Golden State. He might be in the same situation in Detroit. Yeah, and I mean, Detroit's not going anywhere. So you got to throw him in. You got to, got to go. You got to throw him in and see what you got. You got to, and. I hope the young man pulls through. You know, I'm a I'm a fan of his. You know, big Steve Kerr and them got their wish of getting Gary Payton back and you know getting somebody small who could defend and a veteran basically. And I said this on Twitter: if you didn't want, if Steve Kerr and them didn't want the patience to develop the young men like that. Why draft them? Trade trade the picks and get some veteran help. You don't have to get like a superstar, but you can probably flesh out and get some veteran pieces that you really wanted. Now you kind of wasted you wasted these guys' time. Getting actual playing time, Wiseman moved in, and lesser extent, Kaminga to could do stuff. We talked about Cam Thomas. Now, like with some people, people gone now, they had no choice to play him, and then then look at the result: Four, three forty-four games a, a, a piece here, and then only, and like only tonight, you know, he only scored like twenty or so. But they still won a game. So we'll see how James Wiseman, you know, shake out for Detroit and whatnot. Next trade. Jacob Potel to or Toronto. To, uh, San Antonio sees uh Kim Birch, a 2024 first round pick, top six protected for 2026. A 2023 second round pick, a 2025 second round pick. I have no clue what Toronto's doing. I 
Do you? Me either. <laughs> they just had me. I, the OG, uh, OG, uh, or buying sweepstakes didn't happen. You know, they're saying now out now Toronto's like, since all the moves happened in the East with Durant, Kyrie gone, uh, all that stuff, that the East is kind of wide open. But I'm saying to myself, and I'm looking at this, and I'm looking at the standings right now. Toronto is sitting at 10th right now. Behind Chicago, behind Atlanta, behind New York. You got Washington right behind them. Indiana behind Toronto. And Orlando. Washington is a team that that can catch on late and they can overtake you. Indiana that's kind of been on the black backside here the past month. Orlando there's like a couple games that look good, then they lose you know big here. So your Toronto is like. You didn't trade for a, a league guard. You trade for another. You swap bigs, basically. I just don't know which way they going with this. You know, you didn't trade Van Fleet. You didn't trade Gary Trent. You know, you didn't move to Siakam. So I, I don't know which way they going with this squad. I mean, are they rebuilding? Or, like that's what it. You like you said, it's not. It's not. There's no. It doesn't seem like there's a direction right now. And I, I always say about the polos, not. No, and I always I always say this about Masai Ujiri. If I need a, a big tool rebuild, a breakdown, like a hard reset, he will be the guy I would bring in. Be bring in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now we're kind of seeing, you know, post Kawhi and all that stuff that, you know, what you doing, dog? It's like, you got a whole bunch of wing players and bigs. It worked for a little bit last year, but it kind of caught up to you in the playoffs. Now you kind of rotate this roster over and now you're really, it's really kicking your ass. Yep. So I don't know what's he going to do. I mean, it just seems like after, like you said, after the quad thing, they just lost. And granted, you know, we see it a lot with teams that win uh, titles. They'll win the title and then disappear. Just be sorry. We see it in all sports. But also, you know, there are some teams that are consistently coming back, like the Warriors, you know, who will win the title and still be contending. Not just for the year, but the following year, you know, the year after that. Um, the Raptors did what the hell they did. Made it seem like Kawhi was a damn, was a top five player at the time. And it's like ever since then, I mean, they just, remember that's when Siakam got all the play. We thought Siakam, Siakam was the guy. Yeah. And he was playing well. It just seemed like this year seemed like a step back. So, um, again, to your point, I don't know what they're doing now. Granted, they're here in the East, so it just got a hell of a lot easier or softer in a sense. Uh, so, maybe they find their way into the playoffs and make a push. They got a couple guys over there, you know, just kind of young. But, I don't, again, it looks sounds like they were going to move another beat. Then they changed their mind with that. So, 
leaving me kind of confused on what Toronto was doing. Definitely. So I, I don't know. We'll see what's going on with Toronto. I think they made. I think they made their moves in the off season. Uh, real quick, Bones Highland to the Clippers. Uh, Denver gets a 2024 second round pick, 2025 second round pick. Clippers receives Bone Highland. Uh, I say good trade for the uh, Clippers. I love that trade, to be honest with you. I definitely like that trade. I think it's a up. I mean, it's upside for the Clippers. You know. You had a somewhat similar older player in Reggie Jackson. Now you traded for a younger guy in Highland that who can only can grow, and he's hungry as well. So I like the deal for the Clippers, for the Nuggets. I mean, it probably don't hurt him this year, but you probably look into the well to get another young guard for your rotation for next season. And granted, you know they did find Highland in the second round, so maybe. With these second round picks, they can maybe find that type of guard again. Next trade, Josh Richardson, Richardson to the New Orleans Pelicans. Uh, Spurs re- received Devontae Graham and four second round picks. I like this move for the Pelicans. One, you get rid of Graham, Devontae Graham, who's been kind of a real stinker for your team ever since he signed. Two, Josh Richardson, you get a nice veteran wing on your roster. And what you kind of really need at times. I love Herb Jones, Alabama guy, but there's like a right for right now, there's a ceiling that he can bring to you. And I think with Josh Richardson, you know, in late game situations, he can hit those shots that Herb Jones can't do yet. So I thought it was a great move for the, a good move for the Pelicans in my eyes. And then for the Spurs, I, for Devontae Graham, if he does well, he does well. If he does it, you know, I think they'll just ship him out. What's your thoughts on that real quick? You say who again? Uh, Josh Richardson going to the uh, Pelicans. Oh yeah, I to be honest, um, the Pelicans have so they're they're in that situation where they have so many guys they're gonna have to figure out that rotation as well. Um, no, I see McCullum. Don't know how long Zion. It seemed like with Zion, we just don't know when they come back and how much of the usage you want to give him. Yep. It is, at this point, you want to kind of keep him somewhat healthy. So putting too much on him uh, is going to be something they're going to plan to not do. But uh, I think getting the Josh Richardson, he's not going to be the ball handler as much on this team as he was in San Antonio. I think he's going to be less of that. I think he's going to be better back to his playing the four position. But uh, I think that was a huge pickup. Devontae Graham Hill, we barely seen him even playing with the Pelicans. So uh, I think that we don't see him that much either. I think he's going to get bought out. Uh, but he just fell out of rotation at some point. So uh, for me, uh, the Pelicans have so many guys. You know, you add in, you know, Josh Richardson, I think that's a decent piece. But now, it goes into having two or three different you know, rotations. And it kind of tells you they're making this move. It kind of tells you they're not expecting Zion back for a while. And they know they need to make – you know, we talked about it, I think it was like two or three weeks ago. We said, can the Pelicans move forward with how long Zion is out? You know, and it, clearly they see that it's going to be a lot harder than what they thought in the beginning of not having him. So, uh, hopefully, now – uh, this move kind of helps them press forward because uh, it just let me double check um, look at the NBA West standard the Pelicans are 
they are seventh right now. So uh, they're gonna they're gonna have to you know start stacking some dubs as well. And I think getting Josh Richardson, uh, I think he'll make a I, I definitely he'll make a bigger impact than Devontae Graham. Yeah, I think so too. I think that'll be a good move. I mean, good move. It's a good move for the Pelicans. They they had to do something. Uh, next trade. Mason Pumley goes to the Clippers in exchange for Reggie Jackson, who expects to be bought out. And Reggie Jackson is kind of rumored looking to look at to go to um, the Phoenix Suns. We'll see if that if that happens. Uh, Clippers getting a decent back, uh, decent big for a backup. You know, and I think for Charlotte, you know, it frees up time for Mark Williams. Yeah, I said this early in the season. Like, why are we still giving Mason Plumlee starting minutes? So, I don't, only positive in this trade is that it, you free up minutes for uh, Mark Williams, in my eyes. Yeah. Um, and he plays well when he get like, when he gets minutes, he plays very well. Yeah. Yeah, he plays very I well. Give him that opportunity. Next trade, real quick. Eric Gordon to the Clippers. Luke Kennard. Uh, to the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, the Clippers also get three second round picks. The Rockets receive Danny Green's contract, John Wall's contract, and a right to swap Milwaukee's 2023 first round pick with the Clippers. Yeah, Milwaukee's 23 first round pick with Clippers' 23 first round pick. So a pick swap between the Clippers' pick and Milwaukee's first round pick. Well, Houston finally traded Eric Gordon. He's going back to L.A. John Wall is going to be waived. To go to John Wall real quick, if he gets bought out, does he get picked up somewhere? Boy, that is a tough one. Because, man, it sucks to see that John Wall career go the way this has. Seeing him at Kentucky, at the University of Kentucky, um, I just, I don't know, man. I haven't seen him consistent enough for him to get picked up anywhere. I mean, what teams need guards bad, en- guards bad enough um, to, to take a chance on him? John Wall got to be, what, 31? 31, 32, yeah. So, he's definitely not that old, you know, but... You just haven't seen him in any type of rotation. Like, he does not play at all. So, um, who's going to take that chance? We don't know what kind of player he is right now. It's been so damn long. Like, you know, we can't tell you consistently what kind of player John Wall is right now. So, I just... I don't think so, man. I think I think there may be... I think we may see him in China, China somewhere playing ball somewhere else. As hard as it, as hard as it, it is to take that, I think that's what we're gonna see from John Wall if he gets bought out. And I mean, clearly him getting sent back to the Rockets ain't no way in hell he plays over there. Yeah, I, I don't see it either. Um, maybe the Lakers. Maybe the Lakers, maybe the Heat. It's going to be a contender. That's the only two teams I could really think sticks out. Maybe Phoenix, if Reggie Jackson don't go there first. But I'm just looking around the league. It's like, I don't see nobody else really sticking their head out for him unless the injury comes about. So, those two teams right there. And with the Lakers, all the moves they made for shooting all that stuff, I don't think John Wall fits. Nope. Maybe, maybe not. But 
I just don't see that fit right now. Unless an injury happens. So, uh, it's curious to see where he uh, winds up. For uh, Eric going going to the Clippers real quick, I think it, you know solid. You know, good move for them, and good job for him getting out. Finally, get out of damn Houston, being in purgatory for all those years. Next trade. I was just zip through these. Justin Holiday to Houston. Garrison Matthews to Atlanta. Fred Kaminsky also goes to Houston. And two second round picks. So a role player trade in a sense. Dario Saric and a second round pick goes to the Thunder. Phoenix received Darius uh Basley. So, for this trade, is the Basley. Ever since he got the payday, kind of has his production dipped a little bit. And you know, Mike Muscula got traded to Boston, and OKC gets a similar player in Sarich. Who does about the same things. So I think, you know, you're replacing one player with another and you can offload the contract and vastly. Josh Hart goes to the New York Knicks in exchange for Ryan Arcasito, Arcasito, Siv uh, McConnick. And Cam Reddish and a 2023 lottery protected first round pick, who which turns to four second round picks if it's not conveyed. What do you think about this move? Hart going to the Knicks. Cam Reddish finally getting traded, goes to Portland. What do you think of this deal? Minor, but you know, a lot of potential. If things work out for both teams, I think that the Knicks got a. I think that was a, a, a actual good pickup. Uh, seeing Jalen Brunson was ecstatic. Um, but it seemed honestly, hearing that they were in talks with uh, the Bulls for Zach Levine, I was thinking that there's a chance that Josh Hart may have gotten moved again. Yeah, I don't. I just don't see. I couldn't see what the Bulls were gonna take for Zach Levine, not including Josh Hart. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I figured they were, they were gonna have to add something in there that they wanted. Now, look, maybe that could have been what they wanted, and they just that's why that trade didn't happen. But I definitely think that the Knicks got another. I should have. But again, how does Tibbs do this rotation? I mean, to me, I think, see, Josh Hart was put in a situation where he started at the three in Portland because you had, you had Simons and Dame starting at the two, at the one and the two. I don't see that. Well, it's, yes, it's, it's going to be interesting. I, I'm trying to see how can I see it happen in New York. Like, you're going to start Brunson at the one. Where do you start Bear? Does Quentin, Quentin Grimes go back to the bench? So, it's going to be interesting to see how this play. I mean, I, I like Josh. I think he's a, it, again, another Los Angeles Laker that went somewhere else and balled. Um, now, his connection with uh, Julius Randle is going to be nice as well. So, the chemistry is going to be there. But how does he fit this, you know, this rotation? And that's going to be the kicker. I think, like I said, I think it's a is a is a hell of a piece. Um, I'm still wanting to see Cam Reddish get uh, in rotation somewhere with Portland. I think what Portland has with Simons, uh, I think we're going to see Trenton Walker possibly get some more uh, some more minutes as well. 
Uh, so it's just going to be interesting to see how it plays out, man. Um, I know that right now you, 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 you get this big, you know, you get traded, you have these high expectations, you're so excited. All it takes is like a week or two to see how they're going to actually fit in. So that's, like I said, that's going to be something that is to keep an eye on. Um, and for me, I, I kind of want to see, you know, how this, how this play out. But I definitely love the fact that Josh Hart, you know, is, is with Brunson and Julius Randle. I think that's a major pickup. Yeah, I think Josh Hart will uh, fit in great with the Knicks. You know, we'll just see how Tibbs um, plays him, but I think he fits in well. Jalen Brunson seems very excited. And Quentin Grimes, he's been okay, but it's just like a lot left to be desired there. And Tibbs really hasn't really explored the bench very well is just like he kind of searching for that two guard spot and nobody really kind of grabbed their horns. Evan Fournier has been regular, regulated to the bench. Derek Rose to the bench. You know, he really didn't really give Cam Reddish a try. So it just never really materialized. So maybe Josh Hart can maybe come in and, you know, take some starter minutes away and all that stuff. That's what I'm saying. It just depends on how Dick, how Tibbs does it in his rotation. Like that's gonna be very important. You never know how he, you know, he goes about that, and that's that's always been the problem with Tibbs. Now that you got you another shooter, another player on this team, you know, how do you deal with? It? You know, to kind of wrap this up. You know, you have Matisse Thibault going to Portland, Jalen McDaniels going to Philly. You know, we touched on Thomas Bryant going to Denver, him requesting the trade. You know, I kind of hate that. You know, I, I like Thomas Bryant, but I kind of hate that. But, you know, if it's best for him, that's best for him. Then Mike Muscula going to Boston, you know, to kind of a big man to kind of stretch out the uh, rotation a little bit because Luke Cornett and Blake Griffin ain't doing it for you. So I think solid move for him, for them, uh, in that turn of events. D Lock, before we wrap up, who are your winners at the trade deadline? Well, I gotta say the obvious. Uh I really love what Phoenix did. I mean, you went and got one of the best players in the NBA. Um, although he's injured right now, he'll be back. That puts you right back into the title contention. I mean, we talked about how Phoenix had a rough year. It seemed like they're still having that hangover from being in the NBA Finals a couple of years ago. This is what they needed. You know, you had the situation with Jay Crowder not wanting to be there. Cam Johnson got hurt. He came back. We sent him packing. Uh, DeAndre Aiden, you know, getting into it with the coach. So now you bring somebody in who takes the pressure off of Devin Booker, pressure off of Chris Paul. Uh, and, I mean, we know Devin Booker can go and get you 40, 50 if he wants. Now you got another guy that can go and get you 40, 50 if he wants. But also, don't forget, it seems like we've heard this before. The only difference is, I think you have a leader in Chris Paul that's not going to let this ship, you know, be misdirected. So, uh, for me, I think Phoenix is one. Um, and the Lakers. You know, we see what they are without LeBron on the court. We've seen it all year. Hell, we've seen it last year. They look like they're in shambles when LeBron is not on the court. It looked lost. And now you go, you know, and I include grabbing Hachimura, um, grabbing uh, D'Angelo Russell, 
um, Malik Beasley, like Jared Vanderbilt. These are some pieces. You just re- redid your whole roster. You know, now your rotation can fit. Um, like like many people were saying, you put Russell on the court, and it's like you got a bunch of ro- a bunch of guys out there that barely get minutes on any other team just to put Russ out there. So now that you trade him, now you got all these other guys that can make a big impact, and that's a major win in L.A. So I definitely got the, the Suns and the Lakers winning. For me, the winners, I go with the Lakers. I know it's obvious, but to get back D'Angelo Russell in the fold was a huge plus. He's still in his mid-20s, I believe. Let me double-check that. Yeah, he's still mid twenty, so he's 26 years old. So to get him back to, to the fold, it was a positive sign that they didn't let the past kind of hinder what they need to do right in the present. You know, getting Malik Beasley, another proven scorer, outside scorer, helps. Jared Vanderbilt, I'm kind of curious what he brings to the table. But it should be a solid defender at at, at the late eight, latest or you know at least whatever we want to use um mobamba is a wait and see for me you know javon reed they got from the nuggets we'll see how that goes about uh and they're also curious what they do in the buyout market but you know it sucks that russ russell russ book never worked out but you know it, it's it happens you know, sometimes fits don't happen. So I got the Lakers as winners because they kind of remade their roster, and now we'll see if they can make a push for a playoff contention. Not saying for a title, not saying make a deep run for it, but you gotta get to least top ten and never and in the, in the West, and they haven't made it to the top ten yet and so far this year. Um. Another winner, the Phoenix Suns, like you alluded to. Kevin Durant coming to the fold and, you know, to go along with Devin Booker, Chris Paul, to make that, like, one final run for a championship, DeAndre Ayton. It sucks that you gave up the the wing versatility and Cam Johnson and Mikael Bridges. But to get Kevin Durant for the next – three, four years, I think it's a great sacrifice you got to do. And, you know, who's, we'll see who's who gets bought out in the buyout market and and we'll see they go about that way. But Phoenix won pretty big right there. Uh, other winners, I'm looking around. Um, uh, Not too many other, I mean, winners right now. Uh, if I'm being real honest with you, I know a lot of trades and stuff happen. I kind of like my colleague going to the Timberwolves just for point guard stability there. Uh, if I look at another winner, uh, you know, I like the Bucks getting Jay Crowder, especially for small ball lineups. You know, come playoff time, especially got teams against like Boston and potentially uh, Cleveland if they match up with them. So, I don't know. You know, those the the major winners for me. What about your losers? Who are your <laughs> who are your losers in this trade deadline this year? Oh, uh, I mean, I hate to say it, but it's every year. Bar Land of Magic Man. Right now, I mean, I know you got rid of Mo Bamba, but you didn't get anything in return. Doesn't seem like Patty Beverly is going to come, so I see that as a major loss. I think that, you know, I consider a team losing as far as coming in, trying to be a part of the trade just because. 
you know, not making any key additions that is going to impact your team. All you did was help the other team. You didn't make a huge impact for yours. Uh, you know, not granted you created space, but it's just not enough. You know, um, I would also say the Nets. Yeah. I mean, in this situation, I, I really like my Mikael Bridges, um, but it's just the fact that you know you, you, you lost Kyrie and Kevin Durant in the span of about a week. You know, um, I granted to go get Ben with him. Now, to be honest with you, the guy on the team is Ben Simmons. Cam Thomas has a lot to say about that right now. So, uh, the Nets, I just feel like, you know, yeah, you got a lot of draft picks, but it's more so of, you know, to your point earlier, what are you doing? Like, what is your purpose? Like, what, you know, what is going on? What, what, what are you trying to do? We don't know if you're trying to rebuild. We don't know if you're, if you're trying to compete or not. Um, trade away your biggest pieces make us think that you're trying to rebuild. But then you keep a guy like Mikael Bridges and they offer you a, apparently four first-round picks. So for me, um, I think that they are one of those major major teams that lost. I, I just don't see um, what they're going to do with that. Um, another team is Toronto. I mean, going to grab Yaka Poto, it's another team that you kind of like, okay, what's going on? Yep. I mean, you, you know, Anna B was a hot you know, person that many people were talking about. I think Memphis was trying to talk, was trying to get on. I'm pretty sure we know how young and the pieces that Memphis has. So you see those options there, and they don't close the deal. So I definitely see them as at that as a loss. Um, another team too will be my last one. Is the Detroit Pistons? I mean, the draft is Sadiq Bay. Sadiq Bay was looking like he was starting to come into his own. He was making you know strides. Anyway, I like what he was doing. He traded him away. Not only do you trade him away, you trade him for another big, and you already have two young very young bigs right now on your team that are basically fighting for minutes. <laughs> but now you're going to throw another one in the mix. And, like you said, you go and trade for Marvin Bagley just last year. So, again, for me, you know, knowing, hearing this earlier, this team is rebuilding, yes. And with that, I'll say this up front, I don't think Dwayne Case is going to be there for that full rebuild. No. So at this point, don't forget, we're talking about the guy that got hired there for being the coach of the year. Now he's about to be out of the job somewhat, I think, quicker, sooner rather than later. So going through this rebuild is not doing anything at all. So yeah, the Pistons are definitely on that on that on that losing side for me as well. For me, I right, explained about the Brooklyn Nets. I think they're a loser. I think not only losing Kevin Durant, and Kyrie within days with each other, then like throwing James Harden, just everything's a mess. And then you left with a Ben Simmons that probably does not want to play ball, but he knows that if I just do well enough, I can score big money for for the rest of my life. And now, you know, come off season, you probably have to um, get rid of those one of those first round picks to just offload him. So I don't know. I mean, I just don't know where the Nets are going. Like I said, Sean Marks should not have a job after this year. If he's still there and he gets to continue to be GM for this team, if Joe Todd ties. Feel sorry for him or something like that. Then the Nets gonna be in the, in the dumps for a while, unless unless 
guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, Cam Thomas, Mikael Bridges, and Kim Johnson, you know, and Nicholas Claxton hold down the four and, you know, turn to those George Carl Nuggets teams post Carmelo, then I don't know what they're going to do. Yeah, they can patch those picks for a superstar, but who? You know, that's the thing. For who? Damian Lillard? You know? That's the only real person I can really think of you can snatch. If you throw enough draft capital out there. So Brooklyn is a loser for me. Chicago Bulls are never loser for me. Y'all didn't do not a damn thing. Nothing. You had a chance to maybe hit the reset button. You had a chance to maybe offload Zach Levine's contract off, off of your hands. Get something for Vooch in his last year, his deal. Get some value out to Rosen. Something. Maybe pawn off Lonzo on somebody. I think Drummond, Andre Drummond had interest, but they didn't want to do it. I can see why Chicago fans, not just the Bulls, but the fans in general, just kind of the old guard, the old ownership up there in Chicago. I can see why they fans do not like them. Like, where is the Bears, White Sox, Cubs, Blackhawks, Bulls? I, I kind of see they points like these old these ownerships suck and they bring the team down and look look at the bulls at now there's just like nothing there yeah last year was great it's amazing for our you know talk about on the show like damn the bulls may be doing something demar rosen an mvp candidate now yeah now you kind of fast forward now, you know, nobody kind of don't like Levine. Lonzo's knees are bad. You know, bad draft picks and Patrick Williams and Kobe White. It's just bad all around for the Bulls right now. Another loser for me. The Charlotte Hornets. I know they kind of trending towards the number one pick, potentially them and the Spurs and the Rockets. But the chance to kind of really get a reset and sell off Gordon Hayward and Terry Rozier, you got rid of Pumley. That's a good thing. But to not get rid of those one of those two guys, that's just bad. And then, and, this, and then that's the thing. You gave them, you gave Terry Rozier a, a bigger extension than we initially signed with y'all. That's the thing too. It's like, what the hell are y'all doing too? So Charlotte's another one for me. Um, pet the the Raptors. I don't know which way they're going. Uh, I, I'm curious to see what they do in the off season. And you did not move OG. For anything. Cause I know teams were calling, especially in the West. There were like stories coming out like in the the Western Conference teams were calling about him. And you didn't get nothing. And going back to Mazar Ujiri, sometimes he trying to do too much for his own good. And you, you, sometimes you gotta sell off your assets. I mean you sell off your players just to sell them off. You can't ask for everything in the world. And OG should have been traded somewhere. I don't know. I don't know who had to offer what. Maybe something we leaked out here in the next couple of days. But OG should have been gone. He should have been gone somewhere. Wherever it's like to the Heat. If the uh, Pelicans had something. Or the Grizz. Warriors. 
Hell, maybe the Lakers may have something. Maybe the Clippers had something. The way the OKC Thunder is playing, if I was him, I would take a stab at him. You know, Dallas. You know, at something. This uh, this something. You, you should have traded him for something. I, I'm not saying take a um, a package of part tars in the Sam Club uh, water, but you know something. And then I'm gonna throw a surprise to you on this loser real quick. The Memphis Grizzlies. Mm. Ever since, like you pointed out, ever since the Shannon Sharp incident, they've been kind of on the black side. They, they kind of rebounded a little bit, but you, they kind of had some assets to, I mean, granted, yeah, they traded for Luke Kennard. Solid move. But Your team's in position that you're competing in the West. If you make a move for a Kevin Durant or something like that, or OG, something like that, I think you you gotta take that risk. Now you what you see what happened in the past couple of days with Phoenix, with the Lakers, Timberwolves, Clippers, even the Pelicans in your own division. The Thunder are playing a lot better. The Kings are a surprise. You know, the the Mavericks did a move. So, you know, the, even the Nuggets did a move. You know, low level, but still, they did something. Portland. So most of the West have made a move one here and another. Yes, you did something, but you kind of had to do something else to stay above water. So. I think they should have did something. You know, in my eyes. And, you know. We'll see if standing pat was good for them or not. But I think they should have did. I think they should have did something. But that, those are my losers there. You know, nobody else I, I can really think of. You know, there to be honest with you. Um, that's what that's all I got for the losers right there. I think everybody else was cool. Boston didn't, I mean, really didn't have to do nothing. I mean, they did, but they didn't really have to do nothing. But I think everything kind of played out. You know, the people who had to make moves had to make moves. Yeah, exactly. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning us with, in with us on this special broadcast. Talk about the NBA trade deadline. D Lock, how could the people find you on social media? Definitely find me at Black Dash 813. Uh, Super Bowl is coming up, so I will be talking about that. Let them know they can find you at the end of the page. Uh, you can follow me, uh, the show, on Twitter at Fastbreak IESR. That's Fastbreak IESR. Do check out IESWatchRadio.com for your, all your latest shows, news, and feeds. The Super Bowl is coming, bu- coming up, so a lot of guys and gals will be talking about the Super Bowl uh, here this weekend coming up. Uh, I do want to shout out to the chat. Shout out to the guys. Shout out to Larry B. Check, thank you, sir, for letting us go on live tonight. Talk about all the trade madness going on, the rumors, all that stuff. Shout out to Taryn Rodriguez in the chat. Thank y'all for staying up with us here tonight. Uh, I do have a Twitter account, Spawn4288, Spawn4288 on Twitter. I do another show on the side called The Crooks Process. You can follow the show account on Fast Break. I mean, not fast break on Twitter on not Twitter on Facebook and Instagram. The Crooks process. You see the CP logo there in the profile pic. Uh, probably won't do a show this Sunday because it's a Super Bowl. I think we talked about what we want to talk about 
when we were doing a Sunday show. So this will be it right here. So two plus hours of trade talk, you know, what's going to happen, all that stuff. And, you know, we'll see what's going to happen post Super Bowl of all these moves and these players and all this stuff. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in uh, tonight. Uh, we'll be in tonight. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.